In this video, I'll show you how I added three different video cards to my Dell PowerEdge R610. Most of the steps in this video also apply to the R710 and other rack-mounted servers. However, I must admit, this modification has significant risk and could break your system should you try it at home. With the warning out of the way, links to all the parts and timestamps are in the description. The three video card types will be a self-powered GT730 with 4GB of DDR5 memory, a GTX 1650 Super powered by 6-pin PCIe, and all other graphics cards that require 8-pin PCIe power or dual PCIe power. In this case, it'll be an RTX 2060 KO. First off, why the R610? Well, this is the same R610 I used in the fastest RAM disk drive video, link in the description. Even though the server was built in 2010, making it almost 11 years old at the time of this video, I still use it as my daily driver desktop. Its performance for the price is virtually unbeatable, especially if you do rendering, compiling, VMs, containers, databases, and anything else that you need a lot of CPU cores for. For my Windows 10 Pro and this R610, I added a USB 3.0 PCIe card, a couple of SSD SATA drives, dual Xenon X5680 processors for a total of 12 cores, 24 threads, with a base clock of 3.3 gigahertz, and the 100 watt TDP heat sinks to match. To run this server quietly, I'm running a modified version of the Dell fan noise control script posted on Reddit, link in the description. By the way, if you'd like me to make a separate video on the fan noise script specifically for the Dell R610, let me know in the comments. It could be an opportunity to watch a more boring video than this one. Let's get into it then. The Dell R610 has two available PCIe Gen 2 X8 slots. I know that doesn't sound fast, but I can say I've tested it with three video cards in a separate new PC with PCIe Gen 3 X16 slots, and the performance scores were mostly identical at 1080p. I can safely say at 1080p, PCIe Gen 2 X8 is not a significant bottleneck. However, you may see a bottleneck with high-end graphics intense games and a high-end graphics card. One important note here is that the system may not immediately recognize the graphics card. You may have to wait until the OS is booted up to take over. For this reason, I personally have my monitor plugged into the graphics card via HDMI cable and a separate VGA cable connected to the built-in video port on the R610. I just change my monitor source to VGA if I need to enter the BIOS for any reason. Otherwise, I leave it on HDMI until Windows boots up and enables the graphics card. Unfortunately, unlike most PCs, the PCIe slots on this server are only rated for a maximum of 25 watts of power each, instead of the 75 watts of power like most modern desktops. Therefore, the fastest 25 watt graphics card is going to be this Dawid Special Zotec GeForce GT 730 4GB DDR5. Now this is in fact the graphics card I've been using for years on this system. For all the mods, you will likely need tin snips and a razor blade or X-Acto knife. The first thing you need to do is trim off the back of the PCIe X8 slot on the motherboard. Some people like to use a Dremel-like tool to do this. I don't. I prefer a more controlled razor blade that I heat up with a candle. It slices right through the plastic. However, either way you do it, you can easily destroy something here, so be careful. Next, using the tin snips, you'll need to cut out a hole in the cover, but be careful of those sharp edges, and definitely use some gloves. I like to then cover the sharp edges with electrical tape. Once the hole is big enough, place in the graphics card, close the cover back on, and boot her up. The next graphics card is a Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1650 Super WindForce OC 4GB. This card can draw 135 watts in its default configuration, and this is accomplished with a 6-pin PCIe power. Since the R610 does not have any PCIe power cables, we'll have to get creative with the parts. The first part is a dual SATA power to PCIe 6-pin power adapter. We will plug this into two of our empty SATA drive power slots. The next item you'll need is a PCIe 6-pin power extension cable. And the final part will be this 180 degree PCIe 6 pin power adapter. With this adapter, we can reposition the graphics card and plug it in to fit the graphics card into the server case. The plan is to connect the two SATA power plugs into the two center drive bays and then route the extension to the graphics card. 
The first step is to remove the fans and give us access to the backplane. Next, we will remove all the drive sled. With the drives removed, it's easy to lift up the backplane, exposing the SATA connections. Since the adapter is designed to plug directly into a SATA power cable and not a drive slot, it has a clip on both sides. For this to connect, we're going to need to cut off the inner clip, and the adapter should slide right in. No problem. Next, we connect the extension and tuck the adapter into the drive bay. Reattach the backplane and route the wires using the cable channel down the side of the case. With that done, just place the fan assembly back into place and make sure everything's in its proper place. Then, replace the empty drive sleds, and then the drives. graphics card should fit right in, but the placement of the PCIe power will not fit inside the case. This is why we need the 180 degree 6 pin adapter. With this, we have moved the power to the back of the card. With a little bit of effort, the card fits right into the case. Last, we need to cut out the lid to fit the graphics card fans. Tin snips and some electrical tape to cover the sharp edges, and it's good to go. Once the lid is on, there's a little gap, but it works perfectly fine. This is what it looks like on the shelf. And now the last graphics card, the EVGA GeForce RTX 2060 KO. This card has a 8-pin PCIe power connector and is rated for 160 watts. Therefore, it will have to be powered by an external power supply. For the power supply to automatically start up and shut down with the R610, we'll need a few specific parts. First part is this PCIe X8 to X16 riser cable. This specific riser has a Molex tapped right into the power line. The next is a Molex power extension, male to male, and then we need this Molex to ATX power supply switch. With this, you plug in the Molex power in and the motherboard 24 pin from your external power supply. It will automatically switch on your external power supply when the R610 sends power to the PCIe slot. In this case, since we only need 160 watts, I'm going to use this no-name China power supply. This super cheap power supply has a proper 24 pin motherboard connector and the 8 pin PCIe power needed to run the graphics card. And the last part we'll need is a graphics card stand. I just so happen to have a custom stand made from Legos that will hold the riser and the graphics card upright. With everything ready, first we attach the riser to the PCIe slot through the cutout. Then we attach the Molex to the power supply and the ATX switch. Next goes in the graphics card. And finally, we attach the 8-pin power, and that's it. It's not pretty, but it does work great. And this is what it looks like running. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I must admit, other than some casual Rocket League, I don't use the R610 for gaming, so I don't have much in the way of FPS tests. However, this is what I was able to test. For comparison, I reproduced the same results on an AMD X570 motherboard with a PCIe Gen 3 X16, and as you can see, the only standout here is the RTX 2060, and that's expected. Therefore, I decided the best choice for the R610 is the GTX 1650 Super. Just for curiosity, I did test the GTX 1650 Super with the free Rise of the Tomb Raider graphics test a couple of times, scored a 59 and 61 FPS respectively. Please though, keep in mind this test was running while I also had my SQL Server running and all my other normal workstation services running, so that could also have affected the test. Chances are, if you're still watching this video, you're more interested in Cinebench or Blender scores. Well, the Cinebench R23 score was 77.80, and the Blender BMW 27 was 5 minutes 19 seconds. With the R610 running quietly most of the time in a ventilated closet, I added a 20-foot USB cable and HDMI cable. I added a Wacom LAN widget to my phone, and now I have a very capable workstation slash dev server for a total of about $572. But what do you guys think? Would you like to see a separate video configuring the fan speed? Or would you like to see someone use this configuration for a gaming PC? Let me know in the comments. Thanks, and have fun out there.